Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna see what it takes to make a 3D printed prop look like this. Today we're gonna make a really simple prop, but the prop is really just an excuse for me to try a process that I've never had the guts or the know-how to try before, so today we're gonna give it a shot. The prop itself is actually the thermal detonator from Return of the Jedi. This is a thing I've always liked, it's very small, and I wanna have one of these to put in my display case here. But this prop is a little bit unique because it's chromed. I've never really known how to take a 3D printed object and make it look like metal. I've watched people like The Broken Nerd and Core Geek turn 3D printed objects into amazing looking helmets that look like they're made out of metal and I've just never understood how much work it would take to do. So today, we're actually gonna give it a shot. And I'm gonna make it three times so I've got some comparisons. The first version is gonna be straight off the printer. I'm gonna use a metallic filament and just see how that turns out. And then the second one, I'm gonna finish it just like I finished all the other 3D printed props I've ever made, except I'm gonna use a chrome spray paint and see how that turns out. And then the third one, I'm gonna go all the way. I'm gonna buy expensive filler primer, expensive paints, and see if it actually makes a difference. Now, of course, I have to point out that there's a place for all three of these versions. They all can serve a purpose and they can be perfect in certain situations. But I really wanna see for myself if putting in the effort, putting in the money, will get you a prop that looks like it's straight out of a movie. So the first thing I did was find a 3D model. I found a really great one on Thingiverse. I'll put a link to it down below. It's got all the files you need to print it, but it also actually has schematics for adding electronics. I'll do that at the end. So the first thing we gotta do is print three of these things. So here's our baseline print. I'm gonna do another one exactly like this. This is printed at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, so it's got a nice finish to it, but you can definitely still see the layer lines. I also printed this in PETG because it's pretty easy to sand. So the first thing we have to do in both of these versions is take off all the support material and sand, like a lot. This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. You probably know by now that I'm a big fan of Simply Safe. I've got one of their security systems in my house, one at the office, a bunch of the people I work with have systems. It is a great way to secure the things that you care about. It's also really easy to set up. Basically, you go to their website, simplysafe.com slash ILTMS, you build out a system that fits your home specifically. All the sensors you need, any cameras, indoor or outdoor that you need, maybe some smart locks, and then you get everything in a box sent straight to your home. And then once you get that box, you don't have to wait on some specialty installer or schedule an appointment. Everything you need is in the box and you can set up the entire system yourself in about 30 minutes. Once you get your system completely set up, you've got access to Simply Safe's 24 seven home monitoring protection. It only costs about a dollar a day and you can cancel it at any time. There's no long-term contracts, but it is a fantastic way for the professionals at Simply Safe to keep an eye on your home. Those professionals have access to some advanced response technology, which will check to verify if any of the alarms in your house are actual emergencies. And if they are, they can help you get priority dispatch to make sure that you and your belongings are taken care of. It's a great system. It's easy to order. It's easy to set up. Be sure to go check it out. Go to simplysafe.com slash ILTMS. That's going to get you 20% off your system and a free month of interactive monitoring. It's a great way to secure your home and the people and things that you care about. Big thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. I spent about 30 minutes sanding the top and the bottom of this one, and it's looking pretty smooth so far. There's still some details that I need to work on, and the little switch that goes on the top has a bunch of little tiny details that I'm gonna have to get into. One of the ways that I've been doing that is with a nail file. This has two different grits on it, 100 and 180 on the two sides, and it's a great way to get down in small grooves. But there's even some small grooves on the outside of the dome that this won't fit into. They're really, really tiny, and I need to make sure that they don't get filled up with dust or with primer. So I'm gonna run back over each one of these with the tip of a nail, just to make sure that it's cleaned out so it doesn't get caked up with dust. So this one is ready for filler primer and we're gonna call this one medium because it's medium cost and medium effort. I spent about 30 minutes sanding this and now I'm gonna put on a filler primer that I've used a whole bunch of times. I almost exclusively use this because it's inexpensive and it seems to work pretty well. Normally I would completely flood this thing, just completely cover it and then sand it back to what I need. But there are those little lines that I was talking about and I don't wanna fill those up. So I'm not gonna use quite as much filler primer as I normally do. I ran over that primer with some 400 grit paper, just a really light sanding and this is where we're at. 
It looks really good. It does not look 3D printed anymore, but that's not all we're going for. It needs to look like metal. So up to this point, I think this process is just fine. But the next step is really the key. It's the thing that's gonna tell us if this medium effort, medium cost approach is good enough. And that next step is painting it. For this, I got some chrome paint from an auto body store. This is about $10 a can. It's not very expensive. I don't know if it's actually gonna work. I've never used it before. But it is the only thing in there that's listed as chrome, and since that's the look we're going for, I thought this would be a good place to start. So I'm gonna go back to the paint booth and spray these pieces with this paint, but I'm actually not gonna show it to you yet because I wanna reveal all of these at the same time so you can see the difference. But while that paint is drying, I've actually got another set of these. I'm gonna take off all the supports and sand it in basically the same way as I did the first set. I want that part of it, the sanding part, to be the same between both of them so that we can really test whether the different filler primers and the paints are gonna make a big difference. So, more sanding. I've got about the same amount of sanding into the second version as I did on the first one, so it's looking pretty much the same. Something I'm not planning on using, but I have used in the past that I wanted to point out is this acrylic green glazing putty. This stuff is pretty great because it's kind of like filler that you can wipe into areas. It dries in about 20 or 30 minutes, and then you can sand it off, and it sands really, really well. If you've got some big layer lines that you need to take care of, this is a really good way to do it in big patches rather than just spraying the entire prop. I'm not gonna be using that putty for this version. I just wanted to point it out. Instead, I'm gonna be using this filler primer. This is a little bit more expensive. It's more of a, an automotive series one, and it costs a little bit more than the stuff I usually use, and I wanna see if it's any better. But basically, it works just like the other one. You spray it on, let it dry, and then you sand down the high spots until you can start to see the prop underneath it. Basically, this filler just fills up the low spots and tries to even out the surface. So after this filling and sanding, I'm gonna do another thing to this version that's different. I'm gonna paint it black. I told you I was painting these black, but I didn't tell you why. So after we got the filler primer on there, I went over with a coat of gloss black and let that dry. And apparently, based on the experience of other people who know a lot more about this than I do, having that shiny black undercoat underneath the chrome will really help the chrome pop. So we've got this ready to go. And for the chrome, we're gonna use this all clad lacquer. And it's really crazy looking if you look in there. It's a chrome paint. I never used it before, but I'm really anxious to put this in the airbrush spray it on and see how it turns out. When it comes to this all clad stuff, just to give you an idea, this four ounce bottle is $50. So this stuff is not cheap, but this is for our kind of high end version of the prop. We wanted to see if a cost like this and the time it takes to airbrush is actually worth the result. There are actually paints that are even more expensive than this. There's one called Aluma Luster, which is a little bit more, has about the same results. There's some really good comparison videos, but we're gonna try this one, see how it goes. You can definitely see how doing a wet sanding on that black would help because there's a little bit of orange peel from the black that's up there. I do have to completely open the gun up so it's full mixture of paint and air. You can't kind of go back and forth because it seems really thin, but it is going on really smoothly. So even some of the places where you can see a little bit of the orange peel from the previous layer of, of the black paint, it's beginning to cover that up because it's so smooth, which is pretty awesome. You're not going, to, I mean, I'm not going through that much of it, honestly. So I think this would go pretty far. Maybe if you had like a big helmet that you wanted to do the entire thing, you would use this bottle, but pretty great. Great. All right, this is going on really well. I'm gonna do another coat on the bottom section here. Then we can add a few electronics to all of these so they'll look really cool. And then we're gonna compare all three versions. I'm pretty sure I know which one's gonna win. So we tested this out, spraying that silver onto silver filament just to see what it would do. And from one perspective, when the light hits it, you can't even tell that it's there. And then as you start to roll it back, the highlights become way brighter. And so you can see them distinctly. And then as you keep going, you see the layer lines more than you see them in the unpainted section. So absolutely not worthwhile. 
Okay, all of the sanding and priming and painting is finished. The last thing is to add some LEDs to this. Luckily, this 3D model came with a full schematic and everything you need to be able to put some lights in this. So I'm gonna go do that really quickly and then we can finally compare them. All right, these things are all ready to show off, but before I do that, I wanna make one big point. Of course, the type of paint you buy matters, and of course, how you apply that paint matters, but those things do not matter as much as how much time you put in sanding. If you don't sand the prop well enough, it doesn't matter what you put on top of it, it's not gonna look like metal. I spent quite a bit of time sanding and filling and sanding and filling these props, and now that I'm looking at them, there's still an opportunity to have done more. So just remember, sand, sand, sand. I don't like sand. The other thing is how you apply the paint. Anything coming out of a rattle can is gonna give you a lesser finish than something coming out of an airbrush. The airbrush just makes the paint finer, it distributes more evenly, and it's gonna give you a better finish. All right, let's compare these three options. I only had one microcontroller that would fit in these, so only one of these has lights, but I don't think the other two need it. The first option here is one that is purely 3D printed. This was 3D printed with a metallic filament. This is straight off the printer with no work done to it whatsoever. In fact, if you were to sand this, it would look worse. It would be more dull, less shiny, and look less like metal. Now, we'll say for something that you just want to have, you want to see it in the real world, or if you just want your kids to play with something, or maybe as a background prop, something like this would work perfectly well. This is a pretty great filament and would be even better for small details. The big, round, curvy surfaces show off the layer lines and make it pretty obvious that it's not metal. But for detailed pieces, for small accents, this stuff would be awesome. And this is the rattle can version. Honestly, from four or five feet away, this thing looks really fantastic. You cannot tell that it's not metal until you start getting closer and you can see the orange peel that was created by the spray can. But when you shoot a movie or a TV show, there are several versions of every prop. There are some that are close-ups. These are called the hero props, and these are gonna be the best looking ones. They're used for close-up photography, maybe even still photography for promotion. And then there's the stuff that actually gets thrown around while you're acting. Those are the action props. And this one right here would be great for a stunt or an action prop, as long as it's shot four or five feet away. And if you were gonna be doing cosplay and you wanted to have a prop like this on you, this would be a fantastic way to do it. It's low cost, it's low effort, and it looks really good. And lastly, we have the one that took the maximum amount of effort of these three, and honestly, this looks fantastic. Even up close, it looks like metal. You have to get into some of the really tiny details on the top before you start to see areas where it didn't get sanded well enough, and even that is fixable. You would wanna put something like this on your shelf as a replica. This thing looks really, really good. And honestly, this is my first time even trying this. So in the future, with even more effort, more patience, I think it could look even better. From an effort perspective, this really wasn't any more effort than the other ones. I just had to use an airbrush to apply the paint rather than a rattle can. But the problem here is the cost. Like I mentioned before, that paint in four ounces was about $50. Now granted, I didn't use very much of it, but I had to buy four ounces to be able to get the paint that I needed. If you're gonna be doing a whole lot of this type of stuff, it's probably worth having a container of that paint that you can use across several props. But if you're only doing one small thing, I don't know that it's worth it. But on the flip side, if you are a prop maker and you wanna have a nice paint available to you that you can make things look metallic all the time, Getting a bottle of that paint and keeping it around is absolutely worth the money. It looks fantastic. And it's not the only one. There are several paints that do a similar thing and it's best just to experiment with them and see which one works best for you. So there's three different options and you would probably never put these three things next to each other. So any of them would work in any given situation. But once you start setting them next to each other and showing them at the same time, it's pretty obvious which one looks better and which one you may want in your particular situation. Now, of course, this is just one set of experiments that I did with something that I have with my skill set. but there are lots of other ways to do things, lots of other products, lots of other finishing processes. And if you've got some of that information, please leave it down in the comments because I would love to learn it and I'm sure everybody else here would too. But either way, I hope this was informational. Hope it gave you something that you didn't know before and maybe now you've got a new tool in your tool belt so that you can make some props. We've got tons of other projects, 3D printing, woodworking, metalworking, lots of stuff that you may wanna check out. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I 
I need to slow down. So for the first, uh, yeah. Doink. over the years, I have 3D printed a whole bunch of helmets and props and arm, arm, armor, armor. But it's got everything you need for the third, 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 third,